ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode number 37 of the DMC podcast with your hosts today. Myself, Adam Rigby, and my very special guest today. A modern day poet, a true blue Australian legend and gentleman, a man responsible for motivating a generation of trainers and exercise fanatics to move and feel through music and delivering soulful, connected, life-changing fitness events. He's a risk taker, a truth seeker, and more impressively, a truth speaker. He's my great mate and a personal hero of mine, Mr. Lee Smith. Kia ora, bro. Welcome. Thank you, bud. Thank you so much. What an intro. What an intro. I, I'm blushing. I'm blushing. And there, <laughs> we spoke about potential tears. They might come sooner than we thought. So thank you, oh, mate. Love you. Love you. And thank you for the invite you. to us. I love you. To be involved. <laughs> right. I've been, I've been, I mean, I've been dying to talk to you anyway, because um, we are, there is a significant amount of distance between us physically, but obviously not emotionally. Um, when yeah. it comes down to it, mate, you are part of my story. And you will be with me till my last breath. I promise you that. You, Part of my story. And to I, what I wanted to do is obviously sharing people who have wonderful stories, people who have made impact on my life and people who I think have impacted others significantly. And you fall into that category easily, easily. Um, we met through Les Mills. And yes, there are a lot of Les Mills uh, specific people that I, I talk to but it just highlights the wonderful, wonderful opportunity that hanging out, doing something you're passionate about, the opportunities that it opens up to meet like-minded individuals and make lifetime connections, right? So what I wanted Absolutely. to talk about. You, you, just, you just got me there. It, 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 is about, it is about connection, yeah? It's just about connection. And, and, and uh, I know when I saw... I know when I saw the memory come up um, of 2010 where we met the first time in Auckland studio and uh, Juzzy actually sent me a message, an open message on Facey um, tagging me in and then you came in over the top and it was just reading that again. It was like we'd already known each other for 10 years. You know, the first message after meeting each other in Auckland, that, that message that Jazzy wrote then you came over the back of was like, it was like we just caught up after not seeing each other for 10 years. You know what yeah. I mean? That first time it was, um, it resonates, it resonates to me when I think about it. It's amazing. Eh? I mean, we're both very experienced gentlemen, done a few laps, um, <laughs> done, a few done, laps. A few, <laughs> done a few laps and to meet, to meet later in life, but, but to have um, such a raw, true, genuine connection. Yeah. And, and what it comes down to, I think that is, you know, we, we, we obviously um, have a passion for exercise. We have a we have an, an immense passion for people and just doing fun shit. Yeah. Like the amount of laughs that you and I ha have and the chaos we have caused just through doing what seems to be ridiculous stuff are just memories that I that I cherish. You know, oh, no, stuff, oh, no. the stuff that I live for. Um, no, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> and the chaos caused by two like-minded individuals combining, especially when you add in a, a rogue Canadian um, and another bald uh, Kiwi icon gentleman comes into the picture, then chaos ensues. But, mate, I want to I want to um, talk because you know, knowing you and and loving you as I do, and knowing part of your story. But it's, there's such a wonderful woven fabric to the story and how you were introduced to um, exercise. But what I really, what I really admire about you is talk about you got to where you are, which is this moment, right? You got to where you are, which is here. But where you yeah. got to, which which was, in a lot of people's eyes, the top of the game, as good as it gets. One of the greats, one of the OGs, one of the legends. I talked to someone today and mentioned that you were going to be on. He's a new instructor. And I, and I almost felt like I told her that Elvis Presley was going to be on. There was shock and amazement because she loves and admires you. That's the impact you've had. So I love that. <laughs> so, I, love, I, lo I love that. I love, I love that not because it makes my ego feel good. I love that because it reinforces that my 
purpose that I had during that time in my journey was for that reason, to be impactful, because I knew after time, and we'll probably get into this, but just to preempt it, I knew at a certain point that I knew what my skill was, I knew what my gift was, I knew what my strength was in regards to that context of life. And it was to engage with people, whether it was whether it was connection, whether it was music, whether it was sharing, whether it was education, whether it was development, I did things that had depth. I used words that had depth. And as much as they may have made people think in the moment, they were thinking about it later on. And that was always the goal. We can talk about it now and it's obvious the brain's ticking over. I want to get the message from you in a couple of weeks where you go, you're mongrel. You, you know, I woke up this morning thinking about this or I've had that moment a month later and you've popped into my head. For me, that's true influence. That's That was sort of the, the motivator, you know, to be that. So hearing that a young instructor um, in, in any program it's got a sense of that i love i love it and and, and i you. think it, no, no problem mate and again from the heart but you 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 got to the top of the game by just being great by just being great at at what you did you know in a in a game rife with politics and decisions you were the best and always at the forefront of everybody's mind and conversation when it comes to who's the best, who 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 would who who would you want to see, and and that was you. But the, but the overwhelming thing for me is the knowledge that you had, the things that you spoke about, you willfully shared with others and gave it freely. You know the the uh, uh, and a, a proverb for for um, for Maori people in New Zealand, uh, you know, knowledge is a gift. And it's something we've got to share, right? And you did, you did, you did that easily and willfully. You didn't hang on to anything, any of those gems, and and that's what made such a connected experience. So, bro, can you can you take us back to the moment that you shifted into into those Reebok shoes? Hashtag not, uh-huh. not not sponsored. When you shifted into those shoes and started that part of your journey. Look, I I I I lived in. Um... I lived in Canada for about a year, 18 months. I lived in Toronto. I came back to Aussie for a couple of short visits, but I was living in living in Toronto. And I come back to Aussie to sort of reset the roots. And um, I'd fired up some old strength and conditioning cert that I had, and I got into the local gym just on gym floor. Um, and I was over 30. I was like early 30s or just turned 31 or something it was. And it was in my hometown in, in southwest Sydney where mum and dad lived down the road essentially. Um, and it's where I was living before I'd shot off to Canada. And when I when I came back, um, it was working for a big a big uh, a, a big club owned gym southwest of Sydney called Aquafit, a massive centre at the time. And um, um, I had an opportunity. I'd seen the cycle studio and the group fitness studio, and obviously knew what they were, and I knew what Les Mills was. I knew what group fitness was, but had never really given it any personal interest because I was about being in a squat rack and getting fast riding bikes because you're lifting heavy weights you know there was that, that was sort of where it sat um and there was some previous history in you know bmx life around some coaching and and that that it all sort of brought me back into fitness in a way that um i guess i was just looking for something if i'm honest i was looking for something I, I, to, to shoot forward i had the opportunity to train in rpm you know I, I, the bikes in the room they didn't scare me or anything. I actually didn't like the look of them. <laughs> they looked a bit weird. Why yeah. would I ride that when I can ride outside sort of thing? You know, why would I sit on one Fair of them? You. That thing looks like it's worth about $300 and that's not a real <laughs> fixed wheel bike. Like there were so many things in my techie nerdy, you know, my techie nerdy self-serving brain. But um, what, what I did though, it was I went and had a bit of a look, a little bit more of a look into RPM and what it was. And um, 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 it, 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 it the idea grabbed me. I saw something in it. I think what I saw was an opportunity to talk. Yeah, it was an opportunity to speak. And, and that motivation from me probably comes, comes from being, being a kid who grew up with haemophilia. Yeah, being someone who grew up with a, a medical condition, a disorder, which, um, which, which limits my ability to do anything that could potentially cause me some sort of trauma. Body contact sport was out, although I did it. I played rugby and suffered, you know, suffered league and union and, and suffered because of it as a kid, but mum and dad never kept me in cotton wool. Um, but I knew I was never going to be a pro cyclist to travel around Europe and, 
make a living because I had this disorder that was, you know, it, it held me back a little bit. And that's that's really a simplified way of describing it. But that was sort of what it made me realize is that I had to I had to work on something else around what I was doing that I loved. And I loved riding bikes and I loved coaching. I loved talking. I loved sharing. It was always something I did from my high school radio days, you know, from high always. school radio days. It was always born to talk sort of thing. So, so going and doing the RPM training, um, yeah, there was, without knowing what it was, I saw opportunity and I was lucky enough. And I really do say this and it's so much in retrospect to sit here now and go, my trainer was, my trainers were, were Michelle Bridges, like the Aussie biggest loser, Michelle Bridges. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. was the head of RPM at the time in Australia. And, um, and Jaco, Jaco Mix, Misik. Yeah. One of, one of the, you know, okay. one of the, one of the Aussie legends in pump and RPM and one of the, one of the stalwarts of the Australian mm. team. And he was an intern Wow, in that module, right? Um, Legend of a man too. Oh, you just, you know, these, these names and these people are, you know, in, in, in the sense of it, as much as Michelle moved on, not long after I, I had sort of done my thing, you know, Jacko is my trainer. Yeah. You know, we all have that. Who is your trainer? So Jacko was my trainer. You know, when I was on the team, even running teams and, and Jacko was on those teams I was running, Jacko was still my trainer. You know, so there was always that there. Like there's yeah. so there's so much to this, isn't there? There's so much. But but going through the training and 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 then doing my my first workshop and it was um it was Alani, it was Storm. Alani Marla came all the way up from Sydney to oh, Campbelltown it's... to do the worst the first workshop. And I remember the bugger was late. I remember he was really late. Of course. And, and you would think that he'd traveled three hours to get there. That's <laughs> what I do remember. You know, it was <laughs> it was nowhere near that, but as funny as it was. And I had and I remember enjoying the workshop without really knowing what it was, but he did say to me, You really you ride really well, bro. There are his words, you ride really well, bro. So visually it was noticeable. Yeah. And and you know, pull push forward a few years into a space. And I know that was one of my strengths. And you will probably cover this a little bit, but the awareness around knowing what you can do well is something that's really important in this group fitness context. I've always thought beautiful. Yeah. I believe that that's something that, that you have that, that, that good and great instructors, coaches, leaders, they know their strengths. They know them. And that's, that was one of them for me. Um, my journey into the tap team was only a couple of years and that came around because that same club, a couple of years later, there was a, a, a an RPM initial module training on and uh, um, Gatesy was there um, and uh, Meg, Meg, the head trainer for RPM in Australia was there at the time. I'd basically burnt a DVD of me doing a video down the road and took it in and met them on the Sunday afternoon and said, g'day, my name's Lee Smith. Here's a DVD of me doing this. I think I'd do this pretty well. I'd love to love to get your opinion and some feedback, essentially. Yeah, great. You know, so I sort of did what even what I what I think now is the way as an instructor, and that's to be proactive, that's to be confident, that's to be willing to be offended almost. I was willing to be offended. I was willing to be told no. I was willing to take the chance. I was prepared for something that I I didn't, that I may not have liked, but I was confident enough. Without being arrogant, I'd like to think to go. I feel like I'm pretty good at this. I'd love to have a look. And to to Meg's credit, she um she watched the video, and I understand Gatesy watched the video as well. And a few weeks later, I got a, an email and then a phone call. And um, I trained on 31, and by 39, I was on stage at Filex. Yeah. In Sydney. Yeah. I was just only shadowing, but I was training at Filex, and I remember that getting ready for that and. Glenn Ostergaard walked into the room and Sarah walked into the room and Dan McDonough was in town, you know, let alone the team. And, and I was, my jaw was on the ground, you know, I'm, used to this, I'm two years in and yeah. these are the people I'm getting to knock around with already. How could I be anything other than motivated? Yeah. How could I do anything other than be a sponge? I was naturally a sponge, you know, it was, it was just in me to take it in. So, so I took it all in as much as I could, as, as, as quickly as I could. Um, something, something I framed a long time ago, and I've probably shared this with you, mate. Is that, is that you can, you can become an absolute, you can become an absolute expert in a really short amount of time. You can bury yourself in information. You can read. You can watch. 
you can listen, you can take a lot in and you can become an expert in something quite quickly. Yep. But you can't fast track experience. That takes time. That takes a yep. clock. That's laps around the sun. Yeah, laps around the sun. And, and, and I think what I intrinsically knew at that point was I need to take as much of this opportunity in as possible and then earn my stripes, which was the experience side of things. Um, and that's, that's the, the shortish story on how the, the, the pointy end started to grow beyond, not beyond being an instructor. That's probably the wrong thing to say. The, the journey that ran alongside being an instructor. Yeah, that's how that kicked off. Um, yeah, that, that, that's where that, that's how that was birthed. That's how that became. And a, and a chapter that, that kind of wrote another chapter that, in, that again, wrote another chapter and it, and it seems to per perpetuate, right, as we, as we move forward. But such a, such a wonderful part. And I, I, I remember the, I remember, you know, again, meeting you, catching up with you. And those are life-changing moments when, when um, you discover people just like you, yes. you know. And, and I think for me too, like I say, the inspirational way that you were able to connect to people, the, the way that you rode was inspirational to me. I mean, we both know Dan, Dan McDonough, Dan, Dan was, in, uh, uh, love you, what, what, yeah, love you, bro. He, he, he was a critical part in both of our journeys, right? I, totally. I, I was 100%. the same. Yeah, I was the same as you, mate. Loved, I loved anything carbon or aluminium and yep. uh, spe specifically Italian and didn't really consider or didn't really consider indoor cycling as a legitimate form of exercise. And yet I yep. saw this red-headed, fiery, lean Canadian guy just rocking it in a studio, um, doing all the things that I truly love, displaying uh, knowledge, courage, intensity, passion, um and and a real a real deep connection with purpose and people and and to see that inspiring and that lives in all of us i think and blithy i had a chat to blithy recently and he framed it up wonderfully where he said every time that he would jump on a bike or do an experience like that it was always we it was always us because we carry a part of each other with us on that on that journey um that. yeah yeah very significant Mate, I know, you know, the, the peaks and troughs of the journey, right? Because there's been some incredible highs and there's been some incredible lows. And I remember specifically there was a part of your life that was that was was um, um, pretty dark prior to, prior to filming. Everything started to unravel. And yep. and um, I, 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 I kind of, I love this part of the story, though. And that's kind of why I'd love to talk about it. But here you are in the in the midst of this chaos, right? Personal chaos, yeah. Yep. And and you had to deliver a performance on stage in front of all your peers. The expectation was high. Not not everybody. There was a few people that knew what was going on in that situation. Most people knew fuck all about it, right? They were there for to, yep. to see you, and you delivered this incredible experience. And your words after the track that were delivered were well, one of those moments that I will always remember, that I will always remember, and I'll try and find a clip and actually add it because I think it's one of those moments that when it became about us, when it became about everything, when it became about the big picture, regardless of what yep. you were going through, and you shared yep. that about the importance of being pr present and appreciating moments. And that and for it me was, the, was, it was the simple thing, mate. It was the simple thing that we were doing. You know, it was the simple thing that we were doing. We weren't, you know, it, it, it's not about being disparaging about it in a, in a way where you might go, it's not like we're doing brain surgery or it's not like we're doing this. What we were doing is very important to us and very important to the people in the room, very important yeah. to the people as a business. You know, there was a lot going on. What we were doing was important, but I, the beautiful simplicity of, of what we were doing, I think is what resonated through me at that time in my life. You know, it was a, a, a relationships break down, things are hard. And I remember being at a point before that filming where I had, I had said to LM, I, I, I'm not available. I'm not available for this. This is hard for me. I need to, I need to set some time aside for me. I need to, I need to make this, 
I need to make myself a priority. And I, and I said that in a, in a, it felt like the right thing to do at the time. And I was probably a couple of hours North of Sydney sitting on the side of the road. I'd received a phone call from Jackie herself. And she's like, Lee, understanding where you're at, understanding your context, understanding you as a person, understanding your needs uh, and, and your wants and what you feel is best. She said, we, we also need you. We need you. And in the conversation, the way it just evolved. And I, I said, I, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I'm hope that I can bring what's needed to be brought. And she said to me, and I'll never forget the words. And they were something, they were something that, that has influenced me in talking with other people. And I even, even listening to, to Ben talk about this, he used this word a few times in talking with you in your last podcast she mentioned the word vulnerability and she said your ability to show a vulnerability when you're on stage is one of the most attractive parts of you as an instructor of what you do when you, when you put a microphone on again, it's that not being scared to be open to something that's not comfortable. You know, it's not about not being scared to be injured or not being scared to be offended or not being scared to be hurt or damaged or challenged. Just, just confident enough, even with an issue going on in life, to go, no, cool, I've been asked, I've prepared to, I've said yes, therefore I will. Um, you might have a little caveat in the back of your mind that you do a good enough job. I think what I realised, what I want there is that I had people like you, mate, around, and I had people who'd made the effort to come over for Aussie, and even to the point where we had the support from from Chris in the gym to put another class on. I remember we put another class on because the demand was so much, not not because of me, just because of the release and who was there. And and I just remember the energy around, I remember the support that I felt uh, from Glenn uh, and, and from Sarah and from the LMI team and the understanding of where it was and the gentle hands that were offered to me. They weren't placed on me and said, are you okay? They were offered as if you needed, we're here. Mm. And, and the message there was something that I buy into, which is there's a job to be done. Yeah. And those two things just sort of melded really well. And, and the vulnerability in me and the challenges in life were able to make me think about what I was doing at a filming a different way for the first time. And it's probably easier for me to say that in retrospect, it influenced language, it influenced music, it influenced body language. Um, it it de- definitely influenced my persona. It influenced my mindset. All these things were still very much me, but a slightly different version of me because of the context of life, real life. Yeah. You know, and um, I know that <clears throat> release was a good one. I know it was a good one. And, it, and it's, 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 I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember the specifics of it. Um, I remember, yeah, I, I just remember, I remember that it, it, I remember it felt real and it felt authentic. It felt, it felt real and it felt different, but it felt authentic. There, the order of those words was important. Yeah. Um, and so much of that feeling that came from the room was from the room. It was yeah. the people on the bikes in front of me. It was the people on stage with me. Yeah. You know? Um, and 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 it was, <clears throat> I, I don't know if I would say it was the biggest learning I've ever had while in Auckland, but it was definitely in the top, top two or three. Because there are other things in my life that in Auckland that were also for me in the context of the moment, whether in front of camera, on a stage, practicing, or in a back room just talking to Glenn, also shifted my life dramatically in the context of being an instructor over there for a, with a job to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, mate, thank you for bringing that up. It, it, it conjures up thoughts and memories and, and it, it, it's the, the pat on the back for me is I do know again, and a self-awareness piece. And another thing I always encourage in people of is I know I'm a resilient bastard. I know I am, you know, I've had a life growing up as, you know, with, with some health health conditions that I've had to always be across and, and it, it makes me aware. It's always made me aware as a person. Um, I, th- I wrote down something. I, I said, I think I'm someone who lives in, I live within the reality of what I know. I'm someone who does that. It doesn't yeah. mean I don't challenge things. I actually think I'm one of the <clears throat> hardest challenges of most things in my, in my work life. I know that I am, you know, I challenge supportively or from a good place. I ruffle feathers a lot. 
<laughs> you know, I ruffle feathers a lot. I, I, I question things a lot. And the reason, I think one of the reasons I was good at what I did in RPM, and, and I, let me frame this, I was an instructor first, a trainer second, and a presenter third at that level, because I did more instructing than anything else. Training was the thing I did in the second most quantity. And I went to New Zealand maybe once every three or six months. So my context was always from being being that person who taught regular classes. That's where I came from. But I was good at it because I fucking worked hard at it. And I yeah. reckon harder than anyone else. Yeah, yeah. we talk about it, re recognition, being able to step back and, and actually step out of the situation, look back at it and say, do you know what? I fucking deserve it. I, I did work hard for it. You can be proud of yourself. You can, you know, you don't have to talk talk yourself up, but you still have to rec recognize the part you play. And an interesting exercise, you know, I went through um, with Mandy saying three things you're proud of. And a lot of people, when you ask that question, go externally. Yeah. Rather than rather than internally. From what's forget, inside, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you talk about it. Yep. You talk about resilience is one thing that you can be very proud of. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the genuine nature and the courage that you display. So yeah, man, like a wonderful moment. And I felt I felt every ounce of that energy. And that was an amazing moment for me. And it changed me Thank invariably you, as a as a as an instructor to think these are the types of experiences that we should strive to deliver. But these yep. are the types of experiences that we should strive to have as humans as well. You know, and this is part of this agree. this uh, podcast, the deep and meaning deep and meaningful chats is a deeper level of connection through real open conversation. Um, and we're born to do it. We're conditioned, we're conditioned Absolutely. to do it. Absolutely. I think at different times in life we need prompting, depending on where we're at, the context of what we're doing. You know, are, 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 of, of who, are, well, I think I think a, a, a big realisation for me, uh, you know, in, in the later years was, and it was Gatesy, actually, Gatesy really, Kylie, thank you, Kylie. She really went through a time herself where she spoke a lot about self-awareness. And and that for me was, was a bit of a light bulb moment. And it made me really, it made me take everything that I was doing and, and acutely aware of to the level I was aware I was aware <laughs> the level Yomo, I was aware I was aware it helped me be conscious of it and almost look at it a little bit like a third person and realize no there's room there to do more <clears throat> and and it made me go um um who am I who am I, who am I with and where am I that's the real simple version who am I who am I with and where am I and and in 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 that in a in a group fitness context in a business context in a social context those little things for me were a bit of a, a bit of a quick measuring stick. Yeah. Um, not for the amount of energy I would give it necessarily. Maybe, maybe even as I say that, maybe it was to a degree. And maybe even there's a little bit of a learning as I say that out loud, probably for the first time ever. <laughs> um, but it definitely, it definitely heightened what I already think was a strength of mine and helped take it to another level. Yeah. So thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Kylie. I remember that vividly. Um, and it influences relationships, you know. It, it gets away. It pulls it away from the RPMing and it, and it makes it about the people. You know, it pulls it away from the group fitness component and it makes it about the community that's in front of you. Yeah. You know, it took away the apparatus that we were riding and it made it about the eye contact. You know, it, or it, made it, about, it made it about the enjoyment of the music. It made it about the fun, which for fuck's sake, that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about just... Let's get together and have some fun and let the workout look after itself, you know, because I feel to a degree that the less we make it about the workout, if as an instructor, you make it as least about the workout as is relevant, so not missing the must-dos of what we do, when your confidence is at that point where you don't make it about the workout, you just make it about having fun and being with the people in front of you, that shit sorts itself out. You know, and they yeah. are the life changing experiences. They are those moments. You, I think you're more likely to create those moments, those authentic moments. You know, I, I noticed a post made on one of the one of the one of the pages today about about which cues do you love off the DVDs and what do you use? And, and I jumped on there straight away and I said, you know, that's cool in the really short term. But the sooner you make the language your own, the more authentic will be. Yeah, now, exactly. That takes a lot of hard work. 
you know, you just be authentic, make it about having fun. And, and I just think, I think where Les Mills and group fitness as a rule helps us in life is we take those things that we learn in that small space we do it in, and we can take it to our workplace, our other workplace, our yeah. family place, our social place. No. Um, I love the filter that it is. I love the fact that I, I loved, I loved the process of, of, um, of quarterlies. I loved the process of, I still love the process of quarterly. So a little segue is being locked down in WA across the other side of the country from, from the Les Mills head office in Canberra. All of a sudden I realized how much I missed the touch point of seeing everyone every three months. You know, it was a 15 years of my life was seeing everybody every three months, not to ride a bike yeah, together, not to listen to Les Mills music together, to catch up and share stories and look people in the eyes and shake their hands and give them a hug and a kiss yeah. And, and reconnect with people about the reasons that we exist as people, not the fact that we teach a class that's similar, you know? Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you think when we always got together as the groups of cyclists at anywhere in the world or even in Auckland, the, the RPM or Les Mills track was always pretty skinny once we walked out of the gym. It was always about the people. Yeah, of course. You know? And the we, laughs and the chats. Weird. Totally, and mate. It, totally. And, and highlighted really when, when we came over for your wedding, obviously, um, traveling through four time zones. And I now understand why COVID didn't want to make the trip either, because <laughs> fucking hell, Lee, that's a long way. <laughs> Against the wind, it's a COVID hard trip, a chance, bro. <laughs> it's a, I remember, this is a great, this is a funny story. That I always said to a lot of people that when I moved to Perth and I started traveling, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd gone to Auckland from Sydney and gone to Santiago to do something in Brazil and come back to Auckland and gone to Sydney. I'd lived in Port Macquarie and went to Auckland and then to Dallas and I've done Japan from Sydney or gone direct from Brisbane, like so many places. The hardest single flight I've ever done multiple times was Perth to Auckland on the way. Summertime, four time zones in a seven-hour flight, oh. leave at seven at night and arrive at six in the morning. I remember the first time my beautiful wife, then girlfriend, Tina, came with me to Auckland the very first time. I think we were filming. It was the filming of 59, actually. So Dano was there and oh, a yeah, lot of the yeah. rooster yeah. people were there. Yeah. And we got there on the Saturday morning, just in time, basically straight to the gym and got into Glenno's Saturday morning, eight o'clock. Yeah. Some spaces were saved for the two of us to be in there. And I remember after class being out the front and Glenn's walked up to me and he's tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, Hey, bro, your chick's out the front. She doesn't look very good. <laughs> Peter was outside sitting on the steps with eyes popping out of her head and sweating profusely and just, it was everything, you know. It was everything. It was like, this is my life, honey. Welcome. <laughs> this is what we do. This is Talk about a do. journey. Talk about a journey Talk to start journey. your journey. Yeah. It, mate, if you can get through that, if you can survive the rigour of that trip and still um it's, be fortunate enough to stay right? together and, and end up being married then you can make it you can make make it through anything I've, I've arrived in europe in in better shape than i have you know arriving in perth i felt like i've been through a cheese grater um or a pasta machine i've just arrived in pieces Certainly, mate. absolute pieces um, gold. And, and and again a collection of wonderful people and wonderful personalities and we managed to stay in this idyllic uh idyllic setting and, and you know, um, uh, with three meter unidentified objects swilling around on the water off the coast, so swimming <laughs> definitely wasn't wasn't an option <laughs> at that stage. And highlights the many wonders that are, that are Australia, and especially your part of the country, where yep. geez, if it doesn't want to kill you, it wants to have sex with you. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's a hell of a way to spend a Friday night. I'll, I'll give you the tip. This is for sure. <laughs> yeah. But mate, in the in regards to you know you talk about you talk about performance, and you talk about um, being self aware and yep. and um, obviously uh, sh showing up and being there, being 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 part of the experience, and you talk about suffering being an important or a critical part of the experience and and the learning. Yep. And do, do you think that people get too tied into thinking, and this is across the board, this is any any event, yep. anything that people specifically get selected for or trained for or want to do, that they get to that point and feel as though they need to be superhuman. And that in turn shuts down a lot of those instincts, which make makes those events. Yeah, 
Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Do do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm Again, you know how I said earlier, I'm someone who sort of bases my life around the realities of life as I see it, as as it fits my context. I'm very much someone who... I, I like a template. I like a. I don't like a procedure from a business. I hate procedures. Someone else can do procedures, but I love a template. And again, yeah. Yeah, I mean, take it to the Les Mills thing. You know, we have a template of the way we do things, and it works. Join the dots, whatever you want to say. I, I do believe that in a, in a in a simplistic view, but this is my this is my thing, right? It's that when people are cornered or pressured in any yeah. way, you either you either cower, you negotiate, or you come out swinging. Yeah. predominantly that's your first action it's going to be one of those three things yeah and i think i think i think cowering comes from uncertainty not 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 cow, not cowardness just that retreating you know yeah. hands over the eyes hoping it goes away don't want to deal with it sort of thing i think it's more a lack of confidence than it is anything else yeah um, i think the negotiation makes sense as long as it's an honest attempt to negotiate and that could be with yourself yeah, of course. When you're under pressure. Yeah, yeah. it could be yeah. put the mirror and really have a good look at yourself. And coming out swinging, I use it as a metaphor, hopefully more than a than a physical act. You know, it's yeah. that you're prepared to fight. But again, but again, are you fighting for the right reason? You know, and, and I think where I lead with that is is in that context of life's challenges is to is to have confidence to to look at yourself to put the mirror on yourself, to question yeah. yourself yeah. and not to look for faults. It's probably where you do look for, recognize your strengths. What is it that you do well that will help get you through? You know, what is it that I, what is it that I need at the moment to help make this, at least get this on a good path again? What is it that I think that I need is enough of a start because the start comes with the first step. You know, the first positive step, I'm, I'm a massive believer in in the influence of motivation, both negatively and positively. I believe there are such things as negative motivations. You know, if you're motivated for a wrong reason, that's not a good motivation to do something. It might get you started, of course. but if it doesn't swing the other way, and, and basically what I think that means is there's an external motivator and there's an internal motivator. Yeah? If you haven't got your own flame, motivating you you're relying on this external stuff all the time then then how are you going to self-improve you know with a, with a want that comes from within and and i think challenge i I'll, I'll make it completely personal challenge for me always makes me take stock of me yeah yeah and part of that me taking stock of me might be going wifey i need a hand business partner i need a hand yeah, you know, Tony in my office in Sydney with, with B-Bite. T, I, I need a chat, mate. I need a hand. That's, it's got to start here first. So, yeah. so, so I guess then we can dial it down into specific contexts. You know, if you want to link it to a group fitness context, how bad is that really? You know, if it's got something to do with teaching a class, it should be pretty easily fixable. But, yes, but yeah. the first step is still the first step. And, and in the context of a known person, that could feel massive. You know, um, but as you've said, you know, you've got to talk. And again, sometimes you've got to talk to yourself. <laughs> yeah, look, self, self-talk is a powerful tool. I think it's, it's important. And right. And um, I posted recently in my story, a, a little snippet from Mel Robbins. And she's saying, you know, at the end of the day, no one's going to get up and make your bed. No one's going to, no one's going to get you off that couch. No one's yeah. going to stop you watching the TV. No one's going to get that. No one's going to drop that business plan for you. It is entirely up to you. And I think when you look, when you look externally, especially when we talk about things we're proud of and you're giving other external influences the credit and you leave yourself out of that picture completely, then when it gets to those moments, when you really fall back and you dig deep, you don't have the confidence to be able to say, do you know what? I own this space. I belong here. This is me. This is part of me. I did this. Because you do, you put yourself in a situation, like you said, mate, you, you grabbed a DVD, you filmed a DVD and you took it in and you said, I want this. And you prove that you wanted it by being consistent and, and continuing to show up. So it's critical mess. Um, and I, lo- I love that part of the story, bro. I really love it. Um, and and back, if we loop back to the suffering, I, I was talking to class today and, you know, as we say, many laps around the planet. Yep. And invariably, life will continue to throw you lemons. <laughs> life will continue. Yep. And, and it's only, and, and 
And sooner or later, you're going to have to taste them, right? Everybody knows what a lemon tastes like. You are going to have to taste the lemon. But, but invariably, what you do through that process is you learn how to make the lemon sweeter and eventually you end up with lemonade. Now, it doesn't yeah. always happen that poetically or in that manner. No. But what I'm saying, Pete, is taste the fucking lemon. It's the only way that you're going to find yeah. out how beautiful and sweet it is on the other side. Um, so what are the, some of the things around uh, philosophies around adversity that have helped you? First thing is, for, 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 first thing I'll come back to again is just being aware of where you are at the moment, being conscious. <clears throat> let me let me stop using the word aware and just say being yep. conscious of, yep. of where you are at the moment at the time. And I don't mean the room you're in. I just mean the context of life at the moment. You know, you've got to take stock. Well, there's a reason we say take stock. It's because because it's a real good advice. It's yep. really simple and and it's a simple act. It's hard to do. Yeah, it's a really simple thing to do, but it's a hard thing to do. You know, take stock. And 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 something I pull from uh, something I pull from, um, you know, a few people in my time is is fall back onto your strengths to start with. Yeah. Which, again, you've got to have an awareness or a consciousness of what they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sit back on your footings, go back onto that big base that you know that you've got that exists. You know, whatever that is, is it family? Is it work ethic? Is it a bank account? You know, whatever it is for you, what is it that you can fall back on to reground yourself? Because, you know, it, like the stock market, mate, it doesn't go like that, does it? The trend uh -huh. might be up, but it's this. And that is life as well. Yeah. We have to understand that there will be ups and downs. And, and when the downs happen and, and the commodity loses value or, you know, you feel that things have lost a bit of value, what do you fall back on? You know, what, what are you grounded to? What are you attached to? I would think for most of us, it would be, you know, you, you would hope that most of it, it's, it's family, uh, you know, it, it's, and, and uh, you, would, you would hope that that's the case for most. Where that's not, it's then hopefully still people at some capacity, you know. Um, I, think, I think I personally have had probably times where, where my classes were my grounding for a while. You know, if I had distance from people because I'm an, I'm an introvert and if things are hard, I'm probably more of an introvert normally. You yeah. know, my thing was the job. It was the job or it was the business, you know, headlong into the business. You know, let's just do the business. And there's, I, don't think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's always, there's always context around where, when, when it's a healthy amount and then where's the point where it maybe starts to become unhealthy. Yeah. Again, doesn't it come back to, as we sort of said, there's the, you, you're sort of in charge of yourself most of the time, you know, unless a family member or a friend gives you a little bit of a tap on the shoulder and says, what's going on, dickhead? You know, you okay? Or why'd you do that? Or, you know, just something, again, maybe just to pause you for a moment. But I think I, I think it's taking stock and, and, and falling back on your strengths yeah, would, be, would be my advice in the short term, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs a <clears throat> needs someone in their life that's going to call you on your bullshit, right? And and we're fortunate oh, yeah. to have two very vocal partners that will do this willfully for us daily, yeah. <laughs> daily. But yeah. to have that, <clears throat> to also have that relationship where you've got such an open level of communication and can share your emotions freely is just it's just wonderful, right? It's wonderful and sharing the highs oh. and lows. Um, my, my wife, my wife, my <clears throat> wife. I love Tina because she is so different to me. Yeah. You know, two of me or two of her would be a very boring place. You know, the, the fact that we're so different and, and me being the straight line, straight shooter down quickest way to do it, be efficient, rah, rah, bullshit, rah, rah. And T will do this to get to the same point. And you know what? Often than not, she does it better. Yeah. Often than not, it does it better. The longest route is sometimes the better way. You know, she's taught me that absolutely taught me that. And, 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 and the life lessons went back to even things done in a group fitness space, you know, rather than the other way, which was my norm, you know, to be yeah. influenced by someone like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, that there's always learning, mate, all those laps around the sun and still learning. You know? well, isn't, it, isn't it funny? So some of those things can at times, you know, depending on your mindset, they, they can be viewed as, as annoying, but over time you just learn to love them so much and they invariably become part of that the part of the person that structure and that being that you really love 
and you would never ask them to change. You know, when there's when there's the first connection and you see those traits and you don't quite understand them, there's a little bit of resistance. Yep. But as you grow to understand them and they they become sort of intrinsically part of your story and part of your and part of your tapestry. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, tapestry, a necessity and a part of the tapestry. They they do, don't they? They become stitches in the quilt sort of thing. It's they're they're integral, you know, they're integral. They must do. If they're not there, then shit doesn't work, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's um I, you know, I, I know that, yeah, I mean, we, look, we, we should always be better people for the really important people in our life, you know, oh, of course. They, they always make us better, always make us better. And inspire, like, you know, it's so like Justine, she just inspires me or I strive to be better, to yep. be better for her. Um, yeah, an amazing, an, an amazing powerhouse, that woman. She's always been my benchmark of connection with everything, just an authentic. She's been the kind of person, you know, that, that would ask questions. And, and not be afraid to appear stupid, you know, and Simon Sinek says it beautifully, be, don't be afraid to be, appear to be the stupidest one in the room. That's how stuff gets solved, right? Who, if you're not asking questions, how do, we, how do we expect there to be change or evolution? I heard that the other day. I heard a thing the other day about, um, you know, not, if you don't risk being offended, you remove the ability to think. Yeah. You know, because if, if you just say something and it's 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 never challenged, if you say something and it's it's never it's never questioned, then you're never forced to think any differently than the words that came out of your mouth or the thought that you had that you verbalized. You know, and I, I loved that. I loved it because again, it comes from that place of it comes from that place of having confidence and a sense of autonomy and a sense of knowing who you are. That, that 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 ability exists you know um and that's the sort of stuff that resonates with me and I think it's the sort of thing that I it's that I love to share you know as you get older and you feel like you've got some wisdom and you know kids are getting older here you know 15 18 and just about to turn 21 oh my god and, and to have a chat with them and 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 talk to them more as an adult with some adult wisdom wrapped around the words rather than even a young teens language is really cool because you know it's going to if they listen <laughs> if they listen potentially help them as they as they truly step into adulthood and and yeah. likewise as we integrate into modern society <clears throat> we come out in our zimmer frames and and try to communicate as society changes rapidly and things are changing by the second and i've always totally. been a fan of you know that that evolution of self by always putting yourself forward and and but evolution is a necessity, right? We can't just sit. Otherwise, we just turn ourselves into a rock and stay there Absolutely. and be in the same place. So there's Absolutely. so much room, so much room for growth and development as we grow day by day. And we know it because we're living it, right? We experience it. And the great thing about having young people around you like the, like, like the kids and like my kids, I'm learning a new language just about. Yes. I'm learning a new level of communication. Yes. I've talked about it before, coaching coaching kids teams people if you have an opportunity to do that do it it's an it's an amazing it's an amazing advancement in your communication skills you will learn stuff you never even knew existed um i think appreciating the level or un understanding the level that young people are on is, is critical and it helps us improve and, and interact because we have to of um, course yeah of course of course of course you know i i i i, I always I wrote something down when I thought when, when, when we, when we worked out, when we, when you thankfully, when I appreciatively received your request to have a chat, you know, yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah. this is amazing. And I, and I, and me being a scribbler, I have pages of paper, you know, <laughs> that, that I sit next to and I'm a scribbler. I write down so oh, many things, mate. And, and I, and I, I tried to simplify things that pop out of my head that I thought we might talk about. And you tapped into something there. And it's funny that I wrote Gatesy's name above it again, but I wrote training then I wrote learn, then I wrote develop, then I wrote share, then challenge, then learn, then develop, then share, then disrupt, then learn, then develop, then share. You know? Like, yeah. That's that's the journey. Like it's it's it it constantly evolves. It constantly causes things to shift. You know? Um, I guess I bring it always back with me being a consciousness around things, but <clears throat> Again, you know, sometimes I think I, I would bleed a Les Mills black, you know, the logo color would come out of my veins with so much of it that's been 
you know, there's so much of it that's been sort of in, implanted over the years. And I, and I, I love, there's so much I love about what, what it stood for, not about the programs. Take the programs away. It was about the people. It was about the community. It was about the connection. It was about the opportunity to travel and share. It was about the training and the learning. It was about the development because the development was always development of people. It wasn't development of things that people use. It was development of people. You know, it was yep. flesh to flesh. It was a yep. body to body, breath to breath interaction always. And and I can't imagine another job where where I ever would have had that the same way, you know? Um, very lucky, very lucky, very lucky to have so much thought stimulated from an entity that was so powerful, that was easy to, easy to connect to. And, and, and I, and I always loved how I've always loved. And even as I say it now, working on the business team here in Aussie is, is the freedom to think freely. I love it. I love it. You know, um, it allows me to disrupt. It allows me to question. It allows me to challenge, which in turn allows me to grow. You know, it allows me to learn. And as you just said at the start of this little bit, it's about evolution must happen. Yeah. It has to happen. And um, we can do a lot to help ourselves to make it happen. We can't always rely on it to just happen because we exist. It takes effort as well, I think. Yeah. It's interesting, bro, because because I mean, you were talking about it. It was what you were looking for, and, and I think when you get when you get in those moments, and 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 the universe or, or whatever power is out there has a way of delivering new messages, and to be able to see something and take a chance on something that that in reality you were skeptical about. You know, there's yeah. a there was a lot of skeptic skepticism, and you you were kind of stepping back, looking at the whole picture, not quite understanding how it fitted, but you knew that that something in you was compelled to go and do it and then turn, turning that around it became such a massive shift as everything started to unfold and the people you meet and you get closer to the heart of the business and and then everything unfolds but it just shows you by one inkling or one little connection one little moment where something told you that I think this is the path for you and you took it and and look what's happened yeah I guess there's a little bit of you've got to have you say that and it make the word vulnerable pops into my mind again. And maybe that's yeah. you know, a little bit of uncertainty yeah. and a little bit of vulnerability that at that moment that made me step into that and think about that, that way is also one of the things that popped out later in my career as one of the absolute things that stood out as an, as an absolute shining star of it, yeah. you know, coming from Jackie, you know, that, and I, I put that in that category, in that context of, of either that conversation on that day in those five minutes, you know, to have, to, to think about that there, yeah, it was actually always in me. It was always there, maybe. You know, there was also probably a little bit of trust of instinct. You know, a little bit of trust of instinct that, yeah, it feels yeah. like this will be the right thing to do. You know, um, in, in the great words of Emma Barry, though, it's only fucking group fitness. So what could really go wrong if it went sideways? <laughs> uh, Glenn was the yeah. same, mate. Eh? It's only aerobics on a bike, bro. What's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that beautiful, though? Isn't that beautiful, what, what, though? This is like, life and death. This is <laughs> How dare you <laughs> disparage my life's work? Crushed in a moment. I'm like, well, draining me of my blood. <laughs> wow. But isn't it true? Good. Isn't it true? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Isn't it true? I mean, you know, I, I mean, to say Emma's name, you know, to say Emma's name and, and to think of some of the, you know, to think of some of the greats. To sing, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I love the fact that I existed at a time when it was essentially the same people who'd started at Les Mills that were still in there. And I got to see some of the transition begin. Yeah, I got yeah. to see some of the change happen. I love the fact that I also then was able to connect and make, make real good connections with people like Pete Manuel, who was my mentor in Sydney, oh, my you, know, he is, yeah. you know, to, to, Such a to meet him, to meet Susan and to, to, yeah. to meet, to meet Mike and, you know, S Stephen and just to be able to knock around with them socially and realise that the shit that they did on stage was everything they are and everything they aren't, like them off stage is everything they are and everything they aren't. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, I, I loved that. 
loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Seeing yeah. the evolution, evolution as humans, completely, completely. To, to you know, and we've all we've all gone through, we've all gone through that 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 pattern where we came in with the intention, and it's turned into something, and it's led us in this wonderful path. We we. I think generally as, as, as I think generally as humans, we're generally, we, we have a fearless streak in us, you know, if, if you know, I, I would think that it, it, most people in my circle that I deal with in personal life, family life, social life, work life, um, and, and all the aspects of that, I reckon most of the people that I know that I've had any sort of contact with have a, have a, have a, the ability to be a little bit fearless, you know, maybe that's a, and I think that's a cool thing, you know, that 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 willing to make that step into somewhat the somewhat unknown is again can be a daunting thing, but it could be such a cool ride. You know, I I, I think regret is a I think regret is a horrible word. Yeah, you know, I think regret, yeah, regret is a horrible thing, and 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 I, I guess we all have them, and they're all at different levels, and 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 as life winds down, maybe you think more about the things that seemed like big regrets earlier, or maybe other things bubble up. I don't know. At this point in my life, I don't, I don't really think of anything. I'm not really regretful of too much that there's nothing that keeps me awake at night, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you have f- full circle moments where eventually the stuff that you did regret or you were set on for way too long makes sense. Eventually when you come yeah, across maybe and- experiences like that, do you think you, do you think your resilience, you know, you talk about your instincts. Do you, do you think that, it's your resilience and the fact that you've you've stepped through so many doorways in terms of challenges, and you talk about your hemophilia, that have that have honed those instincts. So you that your can your continued nature to take risks has honed your instincts to a point where it just when you know when you know it's right, you can take that step with a little more confidence than normal. Yeah, that's a good word. I I, I don't think I second guess myself a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like it's, you know, like like a like a mental SAS SAS song. You know, you walk into a room and you're sizing it up straight away. You know, yeah. And to a degree, as as funny as that sounds, and a little OTT. You know, again, again, I know I know skills that I developed. You know, in in a in a non conscious sense, in a non conscious sense, in your early days of teaching any sort of fitness or coaching, you walk into a room and are you really conscious of what you've brought into the room on the day? Are you really conscious that you've brought a shitty mood into the room or that you're bouncing off the walls happy or that you've just, you know, you've just started a relationship or you, your, your wife's just fallen pregnant or your boss is an asshole? Are we really aware of that? Yeah. You know, and I think it's things like those, those sort of things for me being, a, being a, a, I wouldn't say I'm hyper aware of things, but I'm very much conscious of, of those things is that I learned to start to use them as tools. You know, yeah. I, I, I can remember... I remember consciously a, a time where I realized that my mood, that my mindset was an influencer before I set a bike up, before I put a microphone on, the energy that you could carry into a room, if you had control of it, was a lot more powerful in a positive way than if you didn't have control of it. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been told that people know when I've got the shits. I've been told that my whole life. I think my mum would say when I was three, you know, You'd come into the kitchen. I could tell you had the shits. You know, it was a, you know, it was a face and an energy, and and it's you know, and and I think better to have can, better to have control of it than than not. Yeah. You know, because again, then then it becomes a tool, and it becomes a tool that <laughs> it becomes a tool that I hopefully use for good more than evil. You know, <laughs> of course. But do you think you develop? Do, do you think you're doing this doing the stuff that we do and and group fitness instruction instruction is one of those strange things right just up in front of a room of people asking them to move one way and then move one way and to 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 feel something and they feel something but do you think we develop empathy rather than we go into it with empathy do you think it's a skill that we We develop develop by our connection with people yeah i think we develop it i think we develop it and i think we probably need to recognize that we've received it. It's probably a bit of a one-way street. Yeah. There's a time in your life where you realize you're getting from someone something that you've never felt before, that you, in retrospect, have probably never given before. 
So when you realize what it is, you know, it's not, not that someone sits down and puts their hand on the shoulder and goes, so well, I just gave you some empathy then. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not going to happen. But, empathy. but that, with that wisdom of crowds, as <laughs> yeah. we get a little older, you know, you realize, wow, that bastard, he did that to me that day. He, that's taught me a lesson, you know, can I pay that forward or, or the next time I'm in something, if I ever see anything like that, I remember how that made me feel. I want to make someone else feel that way. I, I, I just wonder if empathy is that little bit of a, it's, it's almost, it, it has to have been a pay it forward action first before, you know, yeah. um, because the empathy I is the, it's a listening to understanding the feeling, right? The, the listening to understanding the feeling. So, again, when we when we combine it with we talk about the conversation, the art of the conversation, it's just being able to sit back and and be aware. And it could be hand signals, and it could be eye contact, and it could be a color of skin, it could be an energy that's emitted, it could be the way someone's speaking. Those simple cues that can allow you to guide some some uh, someone into a place where they're actually willfully showing you that they want to go. Um, I agree. Now, mate, you and I are masters of what we call talking shit. Dan McDonough, yes. the goat of talking oh, shit. Oh, yeah, the absolute goat. The, yeah. the, the, the absolute ghost of talking shit. And we are surrounded <laughs> by, by many shit talkers, truth, truth seekers, truth speakers. But... Do you, do you think, I mean, we, males, we reference it to talking shit, but do you think it's our way of adding masculinity to, to our necessity to communicate in a deeper level of communication? Do you think it's our way of actually getting to a space where we can open up and break down some barriers by just throwing out that? I mean, we talk about some fun stuff, some random stuff, and it's amazing, but eventually underneath that, bubbling under the surface of all of that is some really deeper, higher level, more meaningful, soulful, spiritual connections. Do you think that, I mean, I, I just kind of, it just floated through my head today in terms of yeah. us as males, not saying, you know, let's, let's have, sit down and have a just, just lovely little conversation there, Lee. You know, it's yeah, talking, I, I'm, talking I'm, shit I'm, with your mates is a process of communication, right? So it's important for us, but. Well, yeah, it is. What, it is. I guess, I, you know, it's, there are, I guess, I guess certain, I guess, you know, certain groups, certain cohorts are going to do things in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. You know, certain gangs, you know, certain crews, you know, certain brotherhoods, um, certain men sheds, you know, the, 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 the where, where, you know, we're, we are territorial to a degree, aren't we? You know, we have to sort of scratch the ground a little bit and let people know we're around. Yeah. Um, and if we're hanging around with other, you know, one of the reasons I think we're all, I mean, if we think about our, our fitness group and our cycle group, that, that our adventures have been big. Yeah. When we get together, they're big events because people have traveled long ways, you know, people have invested money that the, there's a shared cause, which brought us together, but it's not the reason we're there. Yeah, of course. There's these other passions and, and it's always come back to the, to the people, you know, we're like-minded you know, we're like-minded. So maybe, maybe for us, it's just, we've created our own, own language. And I don't think that doesn't mean that there's other groups within your life where it's sort of similar. Chances are that if, if, if some of the other groups, you know, you've introduced me to guys and we can shit talk with them within five minutes because they're similar <laughs> yeah. to us as well. You know what I mean? Their frequency, yeah, right? So They've opened up the channel. You can't close it once it's open. Yeah. You can't close it. You'll always, and there'll, there'll always be a couple of people who who bounce in and out of, of, of groups or life or dynamics, which are a little bit different. And that's great because again, the same is boring, you know, um, for all our similarities that we've got, we're also vehemently individualistic, Yeah, you know, for all the similarities that we, we can sit and compare and talk to with our passions and loves. We're also very much a group of individuals who, who recognize who each other are and, and understand the reasons that we come together and, 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 I don't think we need to, you know, we're, dudes are a bit more one-dimensional, aren't we? We're a bit simpler. We're a bit of a one thing at a time. And, um, you know, maybe that's something that evolves over time. And I do feel it does as we get a little older, you know. I thought 50 was just a number, but it wasn't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Things in the cosmos shifted, <laughs> you know. 
And mm. um, I wouldn't say for the I wouldn't say for the worse at all, but um, I've definitely reflected more in the last probably year than I have ever before. And look, I mean, I conveniently I turned fifty through COVID, so you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I guess the thing there is, I'm saying, I think what the world has been in a pretty crazy place. I, I, I think if I, what was interesting when COVID hit is that we, everyone really rushed to make sure that we got on Zwift together, you know, and that we caught up really quick because it was such an unknown. Yeah. Like yeah. I loved that everyone was keen to make sure that everyone was okay. And then as we found our way in COVID and as we found our way in life and the responsibilities that we still have exactly where we are, that did drift and shift away a little bit, went back to more a normal, but, but in all honesty, that, that doesn't, it's never really phased me. You know, I, I wish more than most things that exist at the moment for the day when we can get back face to face, you know, and then we can have a pedal and we can do a class and we can have a Milo and, you know, <laughs> and we can do it with a lot more. Yep. But I also know that when we do chat, it's like it was yesterday that the yep. last one existed. Amazing. You know, yeah. and that's like with, with all of us in the group, you know, in, in our group and in, in this context is is for me something that will, as you said at the start, will live with me until the day I close my eyes. You know, yeah, that's it's 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 joyful and it's fun and it's hilarious and it's loving. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's, it resonates. It always resonates. Whenever I, whenever we get to chat, you know, it resonates and it hangs around. Everything we do has depth attached to it because of who we are. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's a, you know, I, I think back to the moments we've shared and inside of you know, the people listening or everybody's group fitties, obviously, but talking about the experience that we shared inside the building and studios are one thing, but that what, what shared experiences that led to outside of, the building as well you know traveling to europe and and Fr france was amazing italy was just spectacular and peeps um lee has some advice in terms of if, if you're um in a city that is many many miles away from the ocean do not select the seafood especially <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on, a, oh. on a day <laughs> on a day before you're planning to climb one of the highest peaks in uh, in, oh. in in europe that wasn't one of your best moments bro that wasn't but, my best moment but, but how awesome <laughs> how awesome how awesome was everyone to still make it happen for me a couple of days later wow you know um so to, <laughs> so to, to frame up the story peeps we had one of our friends nick who ended up uh in hospital i ended up in the back of an ambulance um following him out to a on a on a dark savage road pitch black hurtling through the italian countryside to a hospital to lord knows what time it was got back lee was curled up in bed sick as a dog after this seafood was regurgitating through his body out of every single orifice that you could imagine it was the shrimp it was the shrimp we 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 uh lovingly created this little nook so that he could lie in bed and watch the TV. So he positioned the TV and I proceeded to walk in the room and walk straight into it and smash, <laughs> smash the TV. <laughs> Rockstar life. Yeah, we're all about it, mate. We're all about breaking TVs. And even better, they tried to charge us for us for, for it when we left. But old mate was all right. I think it was, I think it was only 150 euros or so, but still I'm like, come yeah. on, mate. I'm sure you've got insurance. That should be okay. And they were a lo yeah. lovely people. But then following that, here we are, a couple of days later, we were like, mate, we've got to do this. We're here, we have to do this. So a group of us, there was a there was a trip planned for the day. There was a group of us that decided, okay, um, I want to share this moment with you because I've been up there. It was spectacular. And we rode up to the top with a guy that had podiumed at the Tour de France. Yep. A, a, a pro surreal moments, talking, surreal. laughing, sharing jokes. It's that like-minded philosophy too, eh? Who would have knew yep. that a guy that was that lived a pro tour life that we saw very limited footage of had an expectation on that would end up to be such an amazing, funny, articulate, just a good bastard. Frank Schleck. I'm talking just about good Frankie. Bastard. Frankie, I love you. Um, I love you. <laughs> I love you. And going up to what? Three and a half thousand meters. We ended up going up to a hotel on a four wheel drive and having, yeah. having an amazing and, and incredible experience to get a sherry nap. Standing on the roof of the um of the restaurant, which was also the ski tower, 
and looking over the glacier that has formed on the top of the Stelvio was just something never, ever, ever forget. And Claudio shit himself in the four-wheel drive going up. Do you remember? <laughs> was it a, he was, a just, he was convinced we were going off the side. Yeah, a beautiful Brazilian friend who was all heart too. And that and without this, without this life, without us taking risks, without yep. us fetching opportunities and going out of our way to make experiences happen, we wouldn't have these amazing lifelong memories or friendships, right? Because who would have exactly. thought Claudio, all the way in Brazil, one of the most amazing humans that we have met. Yes. Just a beautiful soul and spirit who is passionate, not just about cycling, but all things. Oh, living. He was passionate about the air, you know. It, and, yeah. And none of, yeah. It, none of it at any level other than authentic. Yep. And the way that he communicated through, you know, obviously his English um, yep. is far better than our Portuguese. <laughs> which exactly is right. <laughs> non-existent exactly right. but being able to exactly. be being able to be in a space and communicate and i think the funny thing was you know we were in a we were in a room surrounded by people and there was a lot of people there especially with frank and jens and i think what frank gravitated towards us because we were in that space we were just real talk yeah we weren't just hey tell us about the time that you attacked this and tell us about the time your chain fell off on this and tell us about the time that you were in this and tell us about the time you did this and hey what's your yeah. what's your uh, ftp and it was just sitting down, wonderfully mastering the art of talking shit, which he it was an incredible exponent of. And, yes. and again, just just a sheer passion for life and bikes. Yep. Um, or I saw a YouTube a YouTube clip. There was a guy that was a that was a crit racer, and he was saying there's just that wonderful simplicity. Of bicycles how it merges wonderfully with with human and become part of you it's such a simple form of transportation doesn't require fuel or yep. requires as you a bicycle and the energy to move forward and it can take you to wonderful places and that's true eh? absolutely 100 percent I, I i i think it just takes intent yeah yeah there's that word again you know if the intention's there then then the, the bike is the bike is limitless and we have those moments where out on the bike, I was saying about the, the little diaries that I post on the, on the, on the DMC, um, just about I can't have these blinding epiphanies because I'm out doing something that I really love. So the mindset is just so pure and the thoughts so clean. And there's, there's an immense clarity. Um, but regretfully at my age, I forget fucking most of it um, by the time I got home. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down, Rigby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Write yeah. it down, you old fart. But, That's um, hilarious. Yeah, and the, the funniest thing I've got to post it actually because I was getting up and and I had a close encounter with a cow. There was a there was a rather large cow on the way because I've taken up gr gravel, gravel, yeah, gravel. Because the southern hemisphere can't do cyclocross. Is that what it is? Is that, is that the <laughs> yeah, reason? Exactly. That shit's way too hard, mate. What do you want to it, it, look? Do you want a bike? What do you get on a bike to have to get off the fucking run? thing? Yeah, you want a bike exactly. or do you want to run your deck? Exactly. Right. Do triathlon. You can't try and do both. Yeah. I mean, name me a cy name me a guy who did cyclocross that's any good at cycling. <laughs> oh, two good examples. Um, uh, but mate, I was I was up with this. I was up with the cows, and I was thinking it it, it really honed me in, and I it, and just out of nature, you know, when you can hear the birds, and for you it's the ocean. You know, you can hear the waves crashing, and you're driving, and if you're away from it, especially. And there's this purity and this clarity and it is nature and it's communicating all the time. And I was thinking about the frequency and it's funny how we, 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 as a, as a society now find it hard to communicate, but, but what do you do when you see a cow? You want to moo at it, right? Or, yeah, totally. or talking to cats and the frequency that they meet. Meow. We are trying to communicate with cats, dogs, yep. when they, when they bark, we will sheep. Who doesn't bar? Be honest. Who doesn't bar when they see a sheep? No, oh, no jokes, joke, jokes aside with Kiwis and Aussies, we won't go there. Still we won't a, go there. Still a contentious No, point. definitely. I, uh, there, there, is something, there is something cool about mooing at a cow and having a cow moo back. It's moment of connection. It's communicating at its best. And then that Absolutely. opens up those pathways to be able to communicate to everybody else. So if you can go and make a cow moo, why fucking can't you get one of your best mates to talk about his feelings? Yeah, just get yeah, out there. Point. Just very and I'm good not point. saying go and say moo to your friends. Obviously, you've got to <laughs> speak. Although there are some friends that I think would probably understand it. Yeah. 
pumpers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good warm up for RPM that program. <laughs> yeah, shit, isn't it, mate? Just picking stuff up. <laughs> Pick, mate, uh, as as I said, Jerry, Jerry, one of the OGs of Wellington, used to ask me about riding the bike. I said, Jerry, mate. I said anybody can pick something up and put something down, but not everybody can ride a bike. Just remember that. Truth. I like that. Right, that true is seeker. Truth. True that seeker. Truth. Mate, so, um, <laughs> so mate, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll dance around, dance around a bit, and go back to the, go back to the suffering thing, because I'm fascinated yep. by it. I'm fascinated by it. And do you think that we we throw ourselves in this constant loop of suffering? There's we're conditioned to suffer. There's such a desire to suffer that we actually forget about why we're suffering and also to experience the benefit of suffering. So like, for instance, if you've got a job and you're working and you work hard and you continue to work in the grind and you grind daily and it becomes part of what you do and you forget about the reasons you started work in the first place. Why did I start work? Why did I start a business for a lifestyle? And you get in it and it becomes everything that you do. And when you start training, you're training at max intensity. You come and continue to train at max intensity. But what you don't do is you don't get to experience the benefit of it by doing something of moderate intensity or going for a walk yeah, yeah. or sh- sharing that. Do you think we get stuck in a like a endless – or is it in an unnecessary pro, unnecessarily prolonging suffering? So I, is there I a point where we get to where we go, whoop, yeah. I split it in my head straight away. So to me, to me, suffering is probably some is is a challenge that you've had come into your life, not by choice. Yeah. Whereas a conscious challenge is something that you've chosen to take on. Yeah. So suffering is something you need to first recognize and then order to deal with it. And it's a challenge. Whereas a conscious challenge is something that you've chosen to, you know, it's coming. And I guess you can prepare a little better for it. Both of them probably need to end up on the same road, you know, our road, our path, you know, one's coming from one side, one's coming from the other. Yeah. So I sort of, when you say suffering is in, is in a, is in a consistent, is in a loop of some kind, I wouldn't attach it to a calendar or a cycle as much. I think, external challenges will pop up in life yes at all different levels at all different intensities i think what maybe builds an ability to deal with them quite well is also consciously finding challenge at times on the other side yeah Yeah, so you're training yourself for your own personal benefit of that task of that learning of that skill of that of that that requirement and, and by going through that process where it's it's generally an overwhelmingly positive because you've chosen to step into it, you're also preparing yourself somewhat for challenges that will appear that haven't been planned. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 my, head is, my head will always go down to the space of what experience. It'll come back to the experience expertise thing for me as well. You know, what experience have I got in something similar? What experience can I draw on in order to help me with this? Yeah. You know, the, the older that we get, it's the one thing again, you know, the one thing I've realized as I've gotten older is a lot of cliches exist because they fucking exist, <laughs> you know, because they're actually real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and being a little wiser as you get a little older is not bullshit. You sit back and you think about it and you, you hear conversations or you, you, you read things or, and you're like, yeah, nah, you know, my 50 years shows me personally that that actually won't work. You know, and I don't see that as a reason to go, you're only young and you're, you're fucking wrong. I use it as an opportunity to go, well, this is the lived experience. And I see some relevance here for you. Maybe this will help you. You know what I mean? I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. I've tried to try and just take that towards, you know, experience is going to help me, challenges that I, that I accept and take on and, and suffering that might come from, a broadside or, or even suffering that your nose coming. I mean, I, and I say that out loud, mate, you know, again, a consciousness of imagine being someone who grew up with a health condition that was completely uh, manageable, but being told that you've got something that is eventually going to cause you issues. You yeah. know, I had a friend recently, I had a friend recently who's quite young, who's been told 
that he's got MS, you know, and being told that at a young age, knowing what's coming without knowing what's coming. Mm. You know, there's almost that, there's almost a blend of what I've just been talking about, the known and the unknown. There's the a blend of both, and I can't, other than have empathy for what he's going through. My initial words were, "Mate, here's a little bit of my story." What I did was share a little bit of experience. Yeah, yeah, and that opened up a dialogue, actually between us we'd never had before. You know, just as a recent example pops into my head. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great question, mate. It's, it's a really great question. Um, I, I, I think uh, different people would answer it in different ways. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have. I mean, you know, I, I feel it. I feel it. Fifty. You know, you you kind of have your gladiator moment where you're standing in the arena, you know, soaked in blood, and the gates open, and you're like, "Is that it?" Because yeah. you've faced so many challenges and overcome so so much adversity that you're that the resilience that you've built, but the, also the confidence and the self assurance to overcome challenges. Yeah, and, true. And I find I think the goal setting. I think I've probably got more. I think the goals in life are very much more aligned with wife and family. Yeah. At the moment, and they're pretty big, they're pretty deep. And they're going to last a long time. So the goal is to get to the starting point of it. And then the goal is to max that shit out for whatever's left. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that is something that I find a little daunting at the moment as we try and sell a house and we do some other stuff, but, but the outcome when we're successful, which is the confidence, the confidence in it will be, will be that moment where you'll stand there and arms around each other and look at each other and look out and look at each other, and look out and go, we fucking did it, baby. We did it. Yeah. You know, and, and I, and, and it is a culmination of so much of life to get to that point. You know, I really do wonder, I think I almost consciously don't think about it too deeply other than sort of picturing the balcony, you know, yeah. I can sort of yeah. picture a balcony with a view and I don't let myself go too much more than that because I just want, I want that to actually, I want that moment to grow and know that it's getting close and the little steps that are going to happen as we get there. And then when that moment finally happens to go, to just feel it right in the moment, you know, which, which, which in me is not always the case. I like, I'm a planner. Yeah. I like templates as we've sort of realized. I like a template. I like a pathway. Yeah. Um, but um, this is really, really, really important shit, you know, super important rest of the life stuff. Yep. Yeah. And I can't remember another time in my life where I've thought like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, for so, me, bro, I like I'm excited for every day. Every day is yeah. an opportunity for me to 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 potentially meet new people, to help someone to do something different, to learn new skills. And yeah. that's the one thing that I, that that always keeps me going, my ability. And as for you, you know, too, like you're saying, like a sponge. You should never lose that childlike curiosity. And let's face it, we're two of the biggest children that our wives know. Um, <laughs> truth, truth, truth bomb number but, two. Yeah, but how lucky are they? That's all I want to say, exactly ladies. Right. How lucky, how fortunate. My Christmas present this year. Tell you what, <laughs> it's gonna be massive. <laughs> A stick. <laughs> it will be huge. It will be huge. But I mean that 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 level of curiosity and and what I uh, I go back to right right to our um original uh podcast we were talking about the necessity to struggle and the necessity of suffering and where it gets you to and you need to go through and you do um not saying we're trying to shortcut the process and say hey these are the things we've done to get where we got now your journey is your journey these are things that have helped us or these are lessons that we have learned but you may apply them in your own way as you said this is something that i've gone through this is my experience i hope that it helps you process your experience so for young ones to say, continue to struggle, continue to push, continue to challenge yourself, hey, to, to, to learn, to grow, to share, to fucking communicate. And if you're a little bit more mature and done a few more laps, continue to ask questions, be inquisitive. You Absolutely. Know, um, don't, don't, try and, don't try and slow down um, because people are telling you to slow down. If you feel in your heart and your soul and your spirit is telling you to soar and fly, then fucking spread your wings and just fly. Go for it. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm, I, I agree. I, 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 
you know, for me, the biggest transition in the last couple of years of life was, you know, stepping off the stepping off the stage. Number one, you know, in that real in a context of uh, again in, in a group fitness space. So I, I stepped off the stage in June this year, and I've been on the business team within Les yep. Mills here in Australia now for a bit over two years. I, I started in the, in about August 2019. I I am at that point now in this in this new role where I sort of was about three years before I finished. In, in, in my point here end of my Les Mills life. And I love, you're talking about the, the connections and the chats with people. I get that my jam is still instructors. It's still talking about instructors. My jam is still education and development and learning and watching people grow. My jam is still doing it by blurring the lines, by trying to break the rules, by, by not circumventing the rules, but by weaving my way in and out of what we deem as how it should be done or the normal way or, or the, I wouldn't say the right way because I don't think LM, in our LM lives, they ever say, this is the only way to do it. I don't think that ever exists. But I, I love now talking to group fitness managers and instructors in club and owners. And I, like I, I get really close to the same buzz as I have had on a stage with a microphone on my head because some of the chats I like this. They last longer. They're not forty-five minutes or fifty minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, they go on for ninety minutes or a couple of hours, and you, you, you dig down, you scratch the surface, and then you find a crack and you dig down into it, and the conversations become so authentic and so real and so personal and so purposeful. That's what I love. I love a conversation in my older age that has some fucking merit attached to it. Yeah. You know, where you find a resolution or you find a pathway or you see a light or you. You, at a minimum, see an opportunity, even if you're not sure how you're going to make the first step to get there. You know, I, I love, I love that, absolutely love it. And I'm, um, and 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 and, and now to pull it out of that business side of things or the work life, uh, again, it's for me personally, in a family sense, in a social sense, is to make make the absolute max the shit out of everything without everything having have the volume turned up to 11 if that makes a bit of sense you know yeah of course yeah a yeah. little wiser a little cleverer plan well set yourself up be prepared for shit to go sideways don't panic when something doesn't quite work out wake up the next day the sky's not going to fall you know things are going to continue on stay on the path keep the energy bubbling support on people who you can support on offer support to people who need the support you know, it's all those things you just, and the reason they rattle off the tongue is because I'm living them every day. You know, you're living them all the time. And, and again, just having that, just knowing that I have those sort of tools in my toolbox, they, they sit up, well, that shit's digital. Oh, that shit's analog. Let's talk about the digital space. They sit up here in a cloud now, you know, Yeah. you tap into them at any time you need, you know, you just tap into them as you need. And, 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 and I think you I think experience, which is now the time factor over the top of the expertise, brings a calmness and a measurement to the way I approach things in life, you know? Um, and I like where I'm at. Yeah. I really like where I am. I like who I am. Um, there are things I still need to improve um, as, as, a, as a person, as a, as a human as a, as a husband, as a stepdad, as a son, as a mate, you know, there's still things I need to improve on. Um, and I think if there was a day where I went, that's not the case, asshole, you know? And I, and, and you're, I, you're, I, you're right, mate. Yeah. The, you know, the, the intention and the awareness to say, yeah, and has been um, said so eloquently, you know, I own, I own it, I own it, but yeah. I'm trying every day to be better trying yep. every day to, to improve, to offer more. And we all have something incredibly unique and wonderful to offer, right? And it's just been in a Absolutely. position where we're around people who empower that and see that in you. And eventually you get to see it yourself and then and then and then you're away. And you for you for me have been part of that journey, enabling me to meet enabling me to to get here and, and you know you talk about um the the podcast with cody cody's in that position where he's found his dream job where he's now nice. designing gym spaces for people enabling them to exercise in spaces and he loves it but he's he's got me to this point you know without him 
the deep and meaningful chats with Adam and Cody wouldn't exist and the ability for me to talk and communicate. Um, you know, I, I would have found a way, but, but you know, would I have thought, mate, when we were chatting ages ago that I would have said, hey, bro, by the way, in a couple of years, I'll have a, a, you know, a little YouTube <laughs> channel and you and I will catch up on that. You're like, oh, bro, what's the content going to be like, mate? There's a lot of water under the bridge, eh? Yeah, but I feel, I, you know, when, you know, uh, all, all, you know, you, you, you push, you push the banter aside and, 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 and we always talk with purpose, you and me, we always talk with reason, you know, we've, we've sat on, you know, we've sat on trains together and ridden bikes next to each other and, you know, up the side of mountains and sat at coffee shops and walked around Olympic centers and met yeah. some Kiwis at a BMX track in the middle of yeah, Switzerland right, somewhere. You know? And yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? But there's always purpose. We always, we always chat with purpose. And I, I've always loved how, when we talk, I've always loved how, when we talk, family comes into it. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I've noticed. And I remember, I remember, I remember being in your house, you know, and, and you and Jesse looking after me so well. And, and I remember times in studios and out of studios where it's just, um, yeah, family resonates always, always. And I look up. I've I've had moments. I've had moments in in our in our time in our friendship where I've looked at you and your life with Jazzy and and the girls as um, an example of what to do. Oh, it's nice of you to say, mate. Thank you. I think it's a uh, yeah. I think it's a uh, uh, you guys that live a beautiful existence and uh, and are such wonderful people. And it's um fuck. I could do, you could do a lot worse. I could do a lot worse emulating. <laughs> Amy, you know. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of eggs broken uh, to to make the perfect omelet. And you know, there's totally. there's the the idea of perfection that we're chasing perfection, but we're perfect the way we are, and we appreciate each other for who we are. Um, I'm yep. fortunate to be able to share the share the house and space with three powerhouses um yeah. beautiful independent woman we're talking to my eldest about her values and staying yeah. how important staying true to her values and that's part of our upbringing through i guess the les mills kind of stuff right the core values completely but, and i guess establishing your own values that you can stay true to and not not feel as though you have to compromise because if you do you can make the decision you know if it's really making you uncomfortable or or not helping you fulfill your purpose and you have the ability and the power to change it you have the power yes you I'd, have I'd, I'd like to see more people i'd like to see more things around people coming up with their own values at least at least something yeah. coming up with uh you know the you know describe yourself in an mm. elevator chat sort of thing it, it's a great exercise to do you know wrap yourself up because it is it's something where number one you have to devote energy to it you have to devote some energy to it if you're going to have the conversation even as a bit of a piss take, you know, at a bare minimum to have a laugh around the barbecue with a beer, yeah. let's do this exercise. You've still got to give it some energy to do it seriously. I think is um, character building. Um, I think, I think, you know, it's not that we're a brand that needs to be sold or advertised, but as a person, it lets you know, like, like a value or a mission or a purpose for a business, what you stand for. You know, yeah. what I stand for are these things. And it doesn't have to be one, two, three things rattled off. It could be a statement, <clears> you know, <throat> you know, it, it, I think, I think, and I think they're things that probably evolve over time. You know, 20 year old me would have had a lot vastly different values to 35 year old me as opposed to 50 year old me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the beauty yeah. of the situation, bro, you know, I think about the things that I stand for, but I know that you stand there with me. And there's confidence and there's courage and there's such beauty in in that, and that's and that's like I say, like you are you are definitely part of my story, and the conversations we've had and the times that I've had to lean on you, and you've listened and wholeheartedly listened. Um, and and when I say truth, you know, if you've got a problem with someone, I I love it you articulate it, but you also go to the effort of saying why. Yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll expand. There's, there's got to be that reason, right? There's got to be that reason. And absolutely, and I agree. I, I, I agree. Treasure that, and I treasure it. I treasure our friendship every day. There's another day that I didn't wish, mate. We were just out there riding a the bike or just sitting down. Oh, me too, bro. Me talking, too. Sh talking shit, having a Milo, um, <laughs> or some people may call them mockers. Milos, maybe. Let's be real. Milos, Milos, Milos. <laughs> but, but bro, um, you know, I've taken up nearly two hours of your time. 
which is easy talk for us, right? This is easy to it's chat. Easy talk. But mate, what I'd what I'd love to do, and obviously you and I will, will continue the chats anyway, but what I'd love to do is just for you to leave something on this podcast, invariably Lee Smith, some uh, thoughts or a moment or something that you feel compelled to share with the, the podcast and the people. And and um, like I say, it's just a, just a pleasure to be able to talk to you and just listen. So if uh, the, the floor is yours, my friend, I'd love you just to share your thoughts with us. I think I, think I said a little earlier, and I'll dial it down again. You know, I said a little earlier that I sort of go down this basic line of, uh, this basic point where I got to where it was, you know, who am, you know, who am I as a person? Who am I with at any given moment? And where is, where are we, where am I? Meaning together with those people, that person, those people. And I think, I think I'd simplify that again and, and just bring that, bring that advice down around to who am I? You know, you've got to start with yourself. You've got to start with who you are. You've got to start knowing with with who you are in order to get them. You've got to you've, you've got to know the most about yourself more than anyone else. You know, you've got to know the most about yourself more than anyone else because that sets. I just think that is the best base, the best place from where to establish really truthful, honest relationships that will then grow into the levels that they'll grow on, case by case, person by person, circle by circle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, if I can leave anything, I think it's it's you've, you've got to know the most about yourself. Yeah, and and there's a fear around that because again, you're turning the mirror. You know, you're turning it back in on yourself, and 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 it's a scary thing to 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 self critique, to self feedback, to self praise, to self love. You know, they're they're difficult things to do, but I think they're also the they probably enable, I think I would confidently say that at any given time, when, when, when that's done, it's not that the first step you take after doing that is, is, is any easier, but it's probably slightly bigger. Like it's not tentative. You know, the more energy you put into that means I step into it with some confidence. I also step into it with a little bit of vulnerability. I step into it with a little bit of caution. I step into it with a little bit of optimism. Yeah, I step into it with a little bit of hope. I step into it with a bit of love. Yeah, I step into it with a little bit of fear. You know, they're all valid. Yeah, yeah. No one can ever say that any of those things are not valid. If you feel it, it fucking exists. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it starts with you. Beautiful, bro. <clears throat> and for the people that do go through that process of of self reflection and look deep in the mirror, I just urge you to. To, to look look deeper, appreciate the strength, appreciate the beauty, appreciate the depth, appreciate the honesty and the courage it takes just to take that step, to look at yourself and to learn to love yourself. Um, Lee Smith, mate, it's an absolute pleasure just to chat with you, to share time and space. I can't wait till we are reunited and it feels so good. Um, yes. It will be soon, my friend. As soon as the borders open, um, yes. there, there's a, there's an airplane ticket somewhere with my name on it. I'll be thruple vexed if I need to be. I don't care where they put it, buddy. I'm going <laughs> to take it because <laughs> we're coming to us. We're coming to Australia, and I just want to commend you, Lee, also for being uh, as Australian the, the first non-English speaking guest that we've had on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so we will provide we will provide some some subtitles for those of you that don't speak Australian. Hey, you know it, it is our it is our God given right. It has been our right for a little bit over two hundred years to butcher the English language as we see fit. Okay, we're all about efficiencies. <laughs> I'm in no I'm in no position to speak about these dollars. New Zealand accent. <laughs> it's only when you go over to Australia that you realise that the the New Zealand accent is just a little bit twisted. But let's embrace <laughs> it. It's, it's a wonderful part of who we are. It's our history. It's our tapestry. Yes. Lee and I have stood in front of a building at the top of a mountain that is older than the history of both of our nations. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. But, <laughs> isn't that a kick in the head? Exactly so I right. get you, uh, you know, take the step, kiss the girl, go for the job 
um, shake the hand if you're compelled to go and meet someone to do something at the universe or something inherently is telling you of instinct is telling you because this is what it leads to a wonderful lifelong friendship that you will treasure and will create many more wonderful moments um libro I, I i love you from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for spending time and space and to share this with um everybody on the podcast has been a real treat for me that is episode number 37 of the dmc podcast look after one another crazy times so be kind to yourself and be kind to one another it's us. Peace. Much love to all. Thank, Thank you, bro. You, bro.